<clears throat> hey guys. All right, let's do. I want to do a Robert. Oh, one second. Hold on. There we go. I wanted to do a uh, Robert Fisher as uh, Robert James Fisher or Bobby as he's known as white and Boris Basky as black. And this <clears throat> is a Roy Lopez clothes variation. I tried to find um, a game that Bobby played kind of London like. I'm sure it's there. But I thought that um, he liked the Roy Lopez, so I wanted to see how Bobby would handle it against, uh, as uh, would Bobby handle the Roy Lopez if Spassky threw it at him. Let me get a drink and we'll get started. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's let's start down the path. Okay, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. B five, A A four, Knight F six, castles. So they're going to the closed Roy Lopez setup. <clears throat> if he was going to do the open, he would have at this point right here. When he played here, he would have taken, and then Boris would have taken that way, and then you castle. When the knight develops, you play Bishop D and pawn E, and then. It's like the bishop, something like that here, he castles, and then you develop usually something like this. So it's, so Bobby wanted to go through the close, which is kind of different for an attacker. He usually likes open games, but you have to kind of be uh, diversified in your play. So castles, castles, a4, a1, b5. Bishop b3. So Bobby has acquired really a good bishop if you want to think about it. Even though it's gonna the pawns are gonna be on light squares. <clears throat> Jeremy Silman calls this an active bishop. <clears throat> a bad active bishop. So what what happens is this bishop will become good once d3 is played. And this bishop is active. So Bobby actually has a really good game happening. He always could play a3 and then slip his bishop to a2 as well. So, so d6 was played by Boris to uh, get his light squared bishop out. But this all this kind of entombs his dark squared bishop for a while. So yes, he gets a light his light squared bishop out, but at what cost though? So. And potentially, I, he may want to reroute his knight like b b8, d7 to uh, c5. <clears throat> potentially, that would be a, what would maybe an outpost after, of course, b5, uh, b8, and then probably c c5, and then maybe um, c4, and then the knight, so that he can truly outpost it on c5. Otherwise, it could be potentially kicked back with c3 and d4. <clears throat> the knight could, I mean, after takes and then takes back, the knight has to move after this line here. So, you, just, you always got to have these plans in your mind. c3, Bobby wants to play uh, for d4, which is an idea, and also. If Knight tries to play a sweet little a5, Bobby now has a little pocket for his Knight to go to on c2. Then he'll have uh, d4 next, pawn takes, and he can open up for uh, two bishop attacks like that. Baby is that strong, yeah. So c3, Boris castles, d3, kind of just the cement. He doesn't really need to push at this moment. He wants to get his bishop out. He also wants to make a, uh, a area for his bishop if the knight ever gets a little too uh, happy and thinks that the, thinks that it's going to trade it off for his bishop. Bobby's not going to do that. So Boris, oops, he tries that, and, Boris, and Bobby's like, "Really? You're actually your knight's now sillyly placed on uh, a5. So what what are you going to do?" But then Boris says. 
well, I got a tempo on you, so you had to move your bishop, so I'll, I'll just play c5. And now, I can retreat my bishop, my knight to uh, c, c5, and then do my idea potentially of rerouting after uh, c4. <clears throat> so knight bd2, rook e8. Because he wants to make sure that if there's a break that's going to happen, he wants his rook on potentially a half open file. h3 for knight to also stop the knight from coming in, the bishop from coming in. Bishop f8, kind of to protect, just in case uh, Bobby wants to attack. Also, Boris could play um, g6 and uh, bishop to g7. And that's actually the most optimum guarded spot for the bishop because it controls these two points here. <clears throat> the e6 and h6 point. So knight f1, Bobby, want, Bobby sees that there's two potential outposts, actually one, but it's going to be a little hard to acquire that yeah, uh, with this knight we'll just take back. So. So that's kind of why he's moving over here. This was an interesting move because Boris wants to play uh, d5 and see if he can't crack the center open so that his pieces maybe get some scope. This also will free up his bishop maybe to uh, come along here. You never know. g6, bishop g5. So now the knight's pinned h6 to kick the bishop out. Bobby uh, provoked two, provoked the weakness of h6, which potentially <clears throat> could come under fire later on in the game. <clears throat> and But Boris would say, yes, you provoked that weakness, but I can cover it with king to h7. So you do have a slight weakness. You did provoke a weakness from me, but not really. Now I have a spot I can bring my king to and I don't have to worry about uh, my bishop. I can always retreat back my bishop to h8. So d5. <clears throat> now the idea is coming to pass, what we were talking about, to crack the center open. He takes d, c4. And remember, where we wanted to put our bishop? Boom, baby, we love that. You got, you have to, you gotta love that. When you can get bishops that are like this, oh, it's like heaven sent. B4, Bobby's like, uh, <clears throat> not going to do it, nope. And so Boris takes, he, Bobby's like, just take in passing, please take in passing. And this would help uh, Bobby's rook to be more active. So Boris is like, I'm not going to fall for that. I'm going to, I'm going to take here, <clears throat> attack your bishop, so that when your bishop takes back, what 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 Boris should have played was knight to uh, c uh, c4 here. <clears throat> knight c4 is a really strong move. Potentially, though, I don't know. I don't know if Bobby could actually have taken at this point because if he takes bishop takes pawn takes, this pawn is still. Uh, attacked three times, so I, I don't know if taking would have been wise. <clears throat> hmm, let me see. What? Well, maybe queen to b3. That might be a dubious move, though. Queen b3. This He wants to trade off his knight for this light square, dark squared bishop. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. One second. There we go. I'm going to get a drink of water real quick. Okay. So now the best would have been taking, so he kind of would have to. 
He wins a pawn, but then he takes back, rook takes, queen takes d, and then knight comes back. So, what has Boris really accomplished here? Not much. And it would have ended up basically a draw. <clears throat> Potentially, you have to be careful for of your um, your G two pawn, so he wouldn't be able to move back up here. Well, if the queen moved here, then they'd probably maybe agree to a draw because Bobby has um, one second. Excuse me, allergies. Um, <clears throat> Bobby does have the potential for uh, b5. So that there is some attack. It might be beneficial for Boris to actually do a perpetual in this situation. But Boris takes the pawn. <clears throat> and Bobby goes, Bishop attacks the queen. Knight takes. Knight takes. And then pawn takes. So now Bobby's up really a whole. He's up how many pawns? Let's see. He's got six, and Boris has six. So he's up a whole piece in this line. But if you notice that Bobby's pawns are not as um, in unison as Boris's, so Boris does for three pawns. He does have a. Um, solider structure so even if it did come down to <clears throat> you know a king and a bishop versus this structure maybe maybe that maybe it'd be okay for uh, Boris but I don't know I, I don't really favor that and Bobby does a dubious move which um I really, I really do like this move here. I like uh, c4, pawn takes, and then c3. Because <clears throat> Bobby's already up three pawns, so it's not like a uh, big concession for him to give back one pawn. Especially when Boris's pawns are so awkwardly cor correlated now, they're not working together as a good team anymore. <clears throat> he doesn't have any, uh, basically, uh, these used to be connected. And Bobby got rid of his isolated pawn, but, and potentially next, he maybe can try to get to b6, but I think Boris would uh, see that. This is potentially what would happen. And... The rook is the these pawns are gonna start rolling, so it's interesting for sure. Knight g three, e four. Knight to h four. Bishop f six is dubious because there's really no reason to uh, do that. He should just retreat the queen back, and then if the queen wants to come over here and attack more the merrier. Now this pawn's prepared for a potential push. And maybe we can uh, slam the pawns down the board and kind of give a little bit of uh, tickling to the king. And so we'll just see what the line would be. And it, mm, potentially go to a draw at this point. But Boris wanted to attack the knight because, in in theory, humans, human, human thought and creative thought would be, see a piece hanging, attack a piece hanging, right? But you have to remember that it's not really hanging because Bobby could just snap off a pawn, and then and then reroute his knight to e4. So <clears throat> e3 is played. And um, now he moves his knight to attack the queen. Rook takes, takes. And well, I guess he's got to do that, doesn't he? 
Yeah, because this is a critical move. Boris is threatening mate, so Bobby has to actually play that. Oh. I was seeing if there's any other way to do it, and that was actually a really good move. It, uh, Rook takes pawn. Because <clears throat> that, that holds Bobby C3 pawn. So Bobby's still up two pawns. So now he's up four pawns. Three pawns again. And then if he takes here, of course you guys see that that loses and this is protected. And if knight comes there, you can then now attack that. So and if takes, takes. King has to give way, so in either way. <clears throat> and so he loses. Now Bobby has two connectors right here. And so, but the, potentially the bishop maybe takes would have been better here. But I think he was concerned about that. Well, like, no, I think he was concerned if Bo if Bobby took h6, so. <clears throat> so I think that was maybe the idea. So h5 is played, and now this is a uh, real threat. King f2, bishop takes. Now the bishop can't check the king, so. King f, king d, and the bishop moved which dubious there's no real reason to do that just retreat back and then hold on to the queenie square now bobby has two passers f6 was a big time mistake because d6 now and what are you going to do if you um play here I see Wait a second, you probably want to just push this. You just come over here. That's probably best now that, now that we think about it. There's no way to stop uh, from coming in here and grabbing that. And then grabbing that, okay. There, you can't defeat two. Well, I guess you could. It's kind of like the king is locked. This king is locked to this pawn. And this bishop is locked to that pawn. So that potentially... Um, you can queen... Let me see if you... See, what would be the best move here? Okay. Yikes. So Boris resigned there. And we're going to um, do a, Na a Hakaro Nakamura. So this, we did a Bobby Fisher. And we're going to do Bobby Fisher the champion. We're going to do Nakamura the champion. And his games are really, really cool. Especially when he did the Queen Pawn attack. So. 
It's like the like a Tromposky kind of setup almost. <clears throat> so knight to uh, f5 with potential idea. Kind of reminds us of that one game that we played when uh, you play more positionally, remember? And it's actually white who kicks the queen out. And now this gets, remember we talked, this gets an exclaim because it gets out of the pin. No, And this doesn't, um, excuse me, uh, b5 doesn't have as much teeth as it used to when the bishop was on a, uh, a8. So takes, takes, and then now we're attacking. That's under fire. He's getting the king evolved. That's why I love these kind of positions. And he's going to get his bishop, uh, his rook involved here, so. I like how Nakamura actually covers everything. It's like he knows what his opponent's going to do. Remember like what we talked about in um, Hannibal Smith, knowing what your opponent's going to do, predict it, and already have a plan for it. Uh, Nakamura has that. And so <clears throat> he's trying to draw the, the bishop here. So then he can play uh, bishop maybe let's see what would what would you play here oh gotcha yeah that that would not be a fun one and you win a bishop okay why he doesn't take. You gotta always be careful of uh, the pins, the mighty pin. He's trying to pry open the position. So if he takes here, bang, he gets an attack going there and Something similar, and maybe I don't know. That was kind of a dubious move. <clears throat> then, just, and then uh, Levon resigned here because there's no real counterplay to handle if he plays rook takes and bishop takes, and these two pawns, uh, one of them's gonna fall at least. And when you give when you give Nakamura a pass pawn, watch out. <clears throat> so here we go. We're just gonna do a casual maybe, let me see. How do we Trying to figure out how to set up a five minute one. I'll create one, there we go. Uh, okay. We'll give it five seconds. One, two, four, five. Okay, nothing. So we'll we'll head on to our puzzles. And we'll, let's see how we do. We gave it some time. No, but if they were gonna accept it, they would have by now. So let's get into our puzzles. All right. So D. Five, D four, D five. <clears throat> Do 
excuse me. Let's see here. Uh, so there's two pass. So white has a pass pawn. <clears throat> I do see something that potentially could arise. Pawn to e3 takes advantage of this pin. <clears throat> so maybe that's part of the idea. We also potentially have queen to e2. King goes to... Queen e2, king uh, g2 protects the rook. So I don't know if that's the best. <coughs> <One second. coughs> Excuse me. We need to somehow get our uh, position rolling. So maybe, maybe e3, pawn e3. <coughs> Pawn e3 does take advantage of a pin, so if he comes there. Queen takes a. Ooh! Nice! So, queen a6, huh? Wow, 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 huh? Does that does make a pretty good amount of sense too? Because if he ever tries to go on to like a dark square, we always have a potential fork here and here after we take. So, like if we take here, we could play here to fork that and that. Just trying to see. Yeah, they're going down the board, trying to queen. Trying to see if we can't potentially rip this knight up, rook off, maybe with a, a potential here if he goes there. So if we go here and he moves here, we potentially have a check. And if he, let's say, moves here, we could actually potentially check back here. And when he moves there, maybe. Maybe, maybe. The only reason I'm a little tiny bit concerned about uh, Queen A, A, uh, Queen takes A6 is that the well you can't you can't go huh maybe it does work well let's see queen d oh, okay well you have i guess at this point you can play uh bishop e8 e8 threatening to win a pawn so so like if we take here or take here bishop e8 well then then you can just grab that so i guess that does that does hamper his um progress progression 
This also does attack here and allows us to kind of get into the fray a little bit. So I'm kind of liking uh, now that I look now that we looked at it. Queen takes uh, a6. I like Queen a6. The pawn can't push because. If the pawn ever does, we just come over and snap the bishop off. And we're basically winning at that point. So what do you guys think? Bishop a6? I think you're, I think, hmm. I see. Yeah. Well, if the king was here, I believe that we can actually check when he moves. We can actually play check here. And when he moves, we just, we, we actually come back and grab that. Still better in that line. Hmm. Interesting for sure. Well, we should check it. We should check one thing though in that line. We should see why um, this has a sitch. I think it's because of uh, the. Uh, let's see. Okay, king moves. Th okay. Oh, it's perpetual. Okay, it's a draw. That's the reason.
Let's see. So let's go back and try that move out. Hold on, guys. Okay, hold on. Let's take a look. So, okay, here, D3. Okay. Okay, we take. Okay, D2. Okay, we take, we check. And we win the, we win. So now we're totally dominating. We have these, and so if he takes here, we just grab that. And there's no way that he could win now. We have the whole, uh, whole everything in the bag. Okay, um, so rook takes e4, then if rook takes e4, pawn takes e4, rook takes e4. Okay, let's see, rook, rook uh, takes, takes e4. I want to see which rook probably would take. We'll just say the... Say the D rook D takes uh, E4, and then D takes E4, rook takes E4. Um, knight. E5. So, here, 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 sorry, here, here. Is that, is that lose? Uh, okay, gotcha. Then here, then there, and then here. Yeah, I think you're right, yeah. So, 95. Hmm. I don't know, do we actually win the exchange? So if, let's see, knight, knight, uh, e5. Bishop, c2. Hmm. 
Hmm. Maybe we do knight f, uh, f3, check, g takes f3, rook uh, takes e1, check. <clears throat> I think that does work. Now that, now that I think about it, yeah. But I, I do see what you're saying. He doesn't have to take the pawn. He can just grab the knight. So, like, if we played here, 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 he just grabs the knight, and the pawn still is going to fall. So, yeah. Because I'll show you what, what we were talking about. If we just moved, he, he just drops in here, and pawn takes, and then you just grab a, you grab a rook. So that was a great find there, guys. Keep up the good work. We're coming on up, back up the scale again. We just got to keep uh, clicking away at getting them right. And even if we don't, remember, we learn. So that's the whole thing learn, learn, learn. See if night uh, well. Hmm. Trying to see how can we um can we do this here? Think about knight takes d2 check. Queen takes d2. So strange, I'm just not seeing it for some reason. This is weird. Hmm. See so if knight takes e2, check. Queen takes e2. What do we what do we get after this here? What do we accomplish? Not sure we accomplish much. Our knight is well placed there, so hmm.
Maybe we try a rover. Up rook and over. If if we play rook f three f six, bishop takes f six. So if we played, uh, so rook f6, bishop takes f6, we have, uh, we have queen, oh, what the heck was that, that's scary. To take a look at that. That was weird. So, uh, Queen, um, okay. Cross, sorry, Queen G, uh, G4. And if Knight, if G3, then what we could play is our just small G. We can play queen h3, and then he'll go knight to h, h4. I think he seals everything up at that point. Well, we might be able to push, no. I think we lose our rook at that point, so there is nothing to that. Argh. What do you guys think here? I wasn't sure about that. That's okay, though. We'll get it back.
So queen g1 potentially is an idea. King g1. So I'm looking, these are the moves I'm looking at, guys. King g1. Rook uh, takes e5. These are, these are uh, Let's see, is there another one that I was looking at? Yeah. Uh, knight. Uh, B7. Uh, not B7. Uh, C7. Which one of those do you guys think? Because I'm kind of a little stumped here. Really quick, gotta uh, check to make sure um, you guys can chat with me. I think everything's good then. Hmm. Let's see if we can solve this one together. Come on guys, we got this. Let's do it. Thinking about moving King G one. Hmm. Give it one more, and then we'll do this one, then we'll then I'll log off. But wait, this is a uh, tough sitch.
See, f4 looks interesting here. Pawn f4. We're going to win something in that line. But we sacrificed a lot of material, though. We potentially do have that. And then if rook takes, then we can actually win the queen. And if the queen takes, we can uh, take. So if knight, if knight f7, if queen takes, Queen, uh, queen takes check, king moves over, rook takes check, queen takes, and then queen takes. This, the, we'll do uh, one more. Because if, if the queen would take here, then what you do is you play here. Smack. One more, because uh, we, we've solved that really uh, efficiently. Thinking about rook to d7. And then if rook takes a3, rook checks on f7, king goes to e5, and then we push e7. And then if he checks on um, a4, we go, we move our king up to g4, g5. If he checks on h6, we move our king up. If he checks, we just move our king and we get a queen. I'll show you what I'm talking about. That's right. Here, 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 there, 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 here, 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 here and really there's no way to stop this pawn from queening. We have a uh, king to f uh, f4. Oh, 
we could do is check here. And then the king would move forward, then we move up. Hmm. Then he moves over there. I actually like king f4 right now. And then we win a rook for two pawns. King f4, the rook moves up here, we uh, checkmate. So king f4, rook takes, pawn takes, king takes. We grab that pawn first. Okay, we'll call her a day on that. That was a good one. So if king takes here, yeah, you take first here. If he comes over, you squeeze the king's space away. You can actually just take there. So all the pawns are going to fall like everything. So do you uh, guys have any, oops, any questions about uh, the puzzles or anything? And I also wanted to show you what would happen if he plays here. Yeah, mate and one as well. What it would be like. oh. Sorry about that. That's weird. Oh, wow. Sorry about that, guys. That was strange. Didn't mean for that. <laughs> So mate here. And so if you guys don't have anything more, then I would say do I appreciate y'all coming on. You know what? We learned from our mistakes and that's the best thing. You know, we have to keep pushing forward. Keep moving forward. Don't let don't let the things get you down. Remember, we got to know. We got to apply. We got to be willing. And we got to do. So, keep that in mind. Like, when you're wanting to uh, do something, make sure it's truly the best thing for you, okay? And always the Lord will provide. So, just keep that keep that in mind when uh, when you kind of sitting out at the board and you're like, what what move do I play? You may have to get up, maybe just uh, you know take take uh, close your eyes. You know you have to breathe and then believe because uh, you have to know that and trust the amount of time the Lord's given you into chess. So just keep that in mind and remember that. You know what? Learning sometimes isn't. It's it's fun. I remember that there's a song on Little Engine, "The Joy of the Ride," and it isn't always the funnest thing on the ride. But trust me, at the very end, when you haul up those things like she did in the mount up in the mountains, and she went over the mountain to basically save her uh, city area from destruction. It was it was the joy of the ride that, and then she knew she could do it. She says, uh, at the first, she says, I think I can, but then at the very end, she says, I know I can, and I know you guys can do it. You know what? We're do we're together. We're working as a team, 
and uh, that's the whole thing. And I know we can we can improve. We can go the distance. Okay, so keep that in mind when you start feeling down and out. Okay, and remember what Hannibal S Smith said that there's a plan of the position. The plan, like with Nakamura and we talked about and Bobby, they knew what their opponents were going to do, and they planned for it any, uh, anyways. And sometimes they made them do what they wanted to. Sometimes they had to trade down even if they didn't want to. But in the end, it was their plan that they uh, that worked. Okay? And I'll leave you with this thought. As Wesley So says, through the Lord Jesus, and as I say, God bless, and I'll see you next time on Chess Cruncher TV. Have a blessed morning, afternoon, and evening, and I'll be back on, Lord willing, tomorrow, and we'll do some uh, puzzles. I got on a little late later uh, uh, tonight. Had a little extra work I had to do. So, but I, uh, I'm gonna we're gonna react. We're gonna restart our puzzles in the London. So don't worry, guys. If you're missing that, we're getting we're gonna get right back into it. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, that that's cool. And uh, so, if you guys also want to, uh, you can join our um, team. It's capital T for in team space chess, and it has to be a capital C for chess. And then space, and it's uh, capital C for a cruncher. So it's Team Chess Cruncher. Okay. Be blessed, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.